Hello everybody! Well, as you likely know, last week I released a video exploring the difference between phonics and whole word reading. And since then, I've gotten a lot of great questions from you all. So I love to hear that you're thinking about and really engaging with these ideas. And in fact, some of the questions I got were kind of so good that I thought I'd make this short video to piece them together just so I could share those answers with everyone here. So if you haven't yet seen that video, it's probably best to go back and watch that first. Otherwise, what we're going to talk about here won't make a ton of sense. But if you have watched that, let's tuck in. Here are three questions I got in the last week that I thought were definitely worth sharing. So question one is here. Do people ever read in whole words? And it turns out, absolutely. Most kids, before they learn to read, they read in a whole word format. And we can typically tend to see this. Like most young kids will be able to recognize their name or a lot of them will be able to recognize famous brand names. So for a long time, we thought, oh, cool. If they're reading like that, let's just keep pushing them down that path. But the trick is once you rearrange the letters, so I take my name and I make it vertical, now they don't recognize it. Or if I change the McDonald's font, now they don't recognize it. So we call this process sham reading. It looks like it's reading, it's taking the form of reading, but in actuality, it's just image recognition. They just see something and they kind of know what it feels like. So this isn't a true form of reading and it doesn't transfer across contexts or fonts, which means if we want to ever get to real reading, we've got to break those words down. Question two then was this, well, where did the whole word idea then come from? And although there's a lot of debate about where it first started and the philosophy behind it, it came largely from this. According to this, it looks like you, as an expert reader, are reading full words. You don't even need the letters to be in the correct order and you're able to read it. So it looks like expert readers read in a full word way. That's where a lot of this came from, where, hey, experts are doing it one way, so let's just teach kids to do it that way. Now, the thing to remember is that although it looks like we're reading in whole words, go back to the brain and we're not. We're still left lateralizing. We're still breaking words down. The trick is that this process of breaking the words down into phonemes takes about 150 to 170 milliseconds. That means it's pre-conscious. It happens before we even know it's happening. We've become so good at it that the brain can handle that process without us thinking about it, which is why it looks like we're reading in whole words. Think about it this way. This morning when I was tying my shoes, I was talking to my wife about breakfast. So I'm an expert at tying my shoes. If I was talking to my wife about breakfast, this means when I teach my kids how to tie their shoes, I should teach them to talk to their mother about breakfast because that's what I'm doing as an expert, yeah? The only reason I can talk to my wife while I tie my shoes is because I have locked down the component actions of tying my shoes so well that the brain can run that on autopilot without me having to focus on it. When I first learned to tie my shoes, I had to learn the same as everyone else, right over left, tuck it under, have the little rabbit chase the thing around. Only when I learned the step-by-step -step and practiced it enough was the brain able to automate it, run that process on its own, and free up the attention so I could focus on other things while doing that task. That's the same thing with reading. It looks like as an expert, I'm doing something different, but I'm not. It's just because I've practiced it so well, the brain can take and run the component parts on its own without me having to think about it. Which brings us into what I call question 2.5, kind of hinges on the back of that. Well, what about reading comprehension? Like a lot of you will notice that once kids start learning how to read, especially through phonics, they'll start to get really fluent with reading, but then you ask them, hey, what'd you just read? And they'll get nothing. They'll say, oh, I don't know. And that's totally understandable. Here's where you start to recognize that reading as a skill and reading comprehension as a skill are dissociable. They're two different things. I can read without being able to comprehend, but importantly, I can't comprehend without being able to read. So uh, the way I always say it is like this. I can read English, and when I do, I understand it. But because I have phonics down so tight, anything else that uses my alphabet, I can read. I can read Italian, but I have no clue what that says. And for those of you who read and understand Italian, here's Latin. Chances are you can read that just fine, but you have no clue what it means. So reading is necessary for reading comprehension, but it's not sufficient. Reading comprehension comes after the ability to read. So if you have a kid that's in that spot where they're reading but not really understanding things, they're still in the stage where they're trying to lock down the reading process so they can free up cognitive resources to focus on the comprehension, the meaning of what it is they're reading. And the last question I got then is this, what about logographic scripts? What about things like Chinese? Yeah, sure, alphabetic scripts have to be decoded so those go left lateralized, but what about a script where one object means an entire word? There is no phonics to decode. Well, it turns out when you read this type of script, your brain 
left lateralizes. It still does have to decode language. The issue here is what we call granularity. So the part of your brain that decodes language can do it at different levels depending on the script that you're trying to engage with. So something like English, our English alphabet, this part of the brain decodes, decomposes, and decodes individual phonemes. But if you go into a language like Cherokee, their written script doesn't use phonemes, it uses syllables. That's their smallest measure of sound linking to letters. So in this case, the word Cherokee is only written in three letters. They decode in syllables. They need to look at a letter and pull out a whole syllable. It's the same thing here in Mandarin Chinese. Even though it's one object, once it's put into a, a context, you have to decode the sound of that object to make sense of it, in which case everything still left lateralizes. When I said every language goes this way, I mean every language goes this way. And those are some of the questions that I got this week that I thought were really good and worth sharing. So I hope this all helped out and clarified maybe some of the, the questions, ideas you had. Um, if you like what you see, if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe below, it'll make sure more people get a chance to see this video. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week for another regular installment of From Theory to Practice. I'll see you guys soon. Bye y'all.